Hey scientists, how are you going? Mr. Paluso here. Guys, today a short video on batteries and electrical energy. So let's get straight into it. In class, you would have copied some definitions down in terms of what is electricity. So the terms that we're interested in are energy, fossil fuels, electricity, what a conductor is, an insulator, and then just a general explanation of electricity. Guys, if you haven't got these definitions written down in your glossary, I'd just like you to pause the video now and copy those definitions down. That's in your glossary. And when you're finished, we'll continue on. Let's do it. So how does a battery work? So batteries are so awesome because we can use them to power our electronic devices. Every year you get your phones and you want that to be updated with a faster and quicker battery. So when connected to an electric circuit, what a battery does is it pushes electrons around the circuit, which creates electrical energy. Electrons are very, very, very small, negatively charged particles. So we've got two types of batteries here. So we've got our standard Duracell battery here, and we've got two sides of it. We've got a positive side and we've got a negative side. And here's a phone battery, and you may have seen a car battery before. Okay lots of different types of batteries and they're all really really useful. So how does a simple circuit work? Now how this here we've got a very simple circuit. We've got a battery which is connected via wires to a globe. And the globe introduces load into that circuit. So basically what's happening here is the electrons are moving around that circuit and they get into the light globe. Now the light globe introduces a little bit of electrical resistance, which is called load. And what that means is here, this device transforms the electric energy into light energy. So we can see from that globe. Then the electrons will keep moving around into the other end of the battery. So the battery is doing work here. It's got chemical energy inside of it, and it's moving electrons through that simple circuit in order to make the light globe produce some light energy. Okay, so if a light globe is added to the circuit, that electrical energy can be transformed into other types of energy. How many types of energy can you name, by the way? So we just talked about light, electricity is a type, chemical energy is a type. How many more can you name? Guys, this is an example of a circuit diagram. So when circuits get a little bit more complicated, they can get very messy. So a way for us to represent them is using what's called circuit diagrams. Here I've got a standard picture of a simple circuit. So we have a battery, we've got the positive end of the battery and the negative end of the battery. The way that electrons move is out from the negative end and towards the positive end. So for this circuit, the electrons, which are negatively charged, will be flowing from right all the way down through the wire into this thing here, which is a switch, kind of like a light switch, so it opens and closes the circuit. If the switch is closed, so that would be on, then the electrons will keep moving through. If the circuit is open, which would be off, then the circuit is broken and no electricity will flow through at all. So that's open versus closed circuits. The electrons will keep flowing through here, through our light globe, which is where our electrical load is, so our point of resistance, keep flowing through all the way around to the positive end. And that will continue until the battery runs out of chemical energy, that is, it goes flat. Now here's our circuit diagram with symbols, so you can see a few differences here. First of all, the battery is now represented by two lines, one long, that's the positive end, and a short, fatter one, that's the negative end. We've got a switch, and that's represented by two dots, and that line in the middle, is basically the switch being closed. If the switch was open, then that line would be represented going outwards like this or like this, so not connected. And then our light globe is represented by a circle with an across through it. So those are three symbols that we want you to remember. A battery like this, the switch like this, and the globe like this. So now it's your turn. In your books, I'd like you to try to represent this simple circuit with a circuit diagram. Now to draw a circuit diagram, you need to use pencil 
and you need to use a ruler, okay? Because it needs to be nice and neat, just like the previous example. Now the components of this circuit here, we've got our battery, okay? We've got our positive end and our negative end. We have a switch. Now this is a funny looking switch, but that's what it is. And that's currently in the on position or the closed, okay? And then here we've got our light globe. These are wires, even though they're curved here, in a circuit diagram, you represent them as just straight lines. See how you go and show your teacher at the start of your next lesson. Thanks for watching, guys.